Very often when someone's fridge has stopped making things cold, they think they're gonna have to spend thousands of dollars to buy a new one, or worse, spend hundreds of dollars to bring a technician in and fix it. But if you're handy with a multimeter, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose the compressor and see if it's the relay. And if it is the relay, you can change it with either a factory replacement that you can get online, like Amazon sells these things. But what some people use is what they call a three-in-one start or a hard start kit. And basically it includes the start capacitor, it has the relay and it has an overload switch all in one and you just wire it into the compressor and Bob's your uncle. Your fridge is fixed and it's nice and cold again. And you fixed your own fridge. So stay tuned, I'm gonna show you all that here today. Let's get in the back of the fridge, unplug it, take off the cover and check that compressor. Okay, the first thing you do before you work on a fridge, make sure this is unplugged, okay? Then we're gonna take out these little screws around this cover. I wanna access this cover. This is where the compressor is, right in behind here. Okay, here's the relay. And there's the capacitor on it here. And that just pulls off the compressor just like that. And there's the terminal holes right there. See those three holes? Uh, the other thing you'll have is, I've already cut this off, but you'll see this is the connector that brings power to the whole assembly right here. Okay, and you'll see that later in the video, what I've done with those wires that came into there. Okay, I'm gonna use my multimeter on the ohm setting to test those terminals on the compressor. And I'll show you out here on a piece of paper what I've done and what readings I get because it's really hard to film in here with the camera and the meter and everything all in that little hole under the fridge. Okay, so I just got under the fridge and I tested between the terminals with my multimeter on the ohm setting. So I did it like this, the, the, it was set up like this. There's two terminals across the top and one down like this. Oh yeah, on the three terminals, none of them are marked. So what I did was I went between here and here. And what I got was a reading of 6.4 ohms, okay? And then I went between here and here and I got a reading of 4.2 ohms, okay? And then I went between here and here and I got a reading of 10.6 ohms, okay? And that adds up. 6.4 and 4.2 equals 10.6, okay? So what we know from that is that this is your common terminal. The highest resistance is gonna be, be between the start and the run, okay? So there's gonna be a winding there, and there's gonna be a winding there. So this is your common, okay? And to figure out which is the start and the run, the start is gonna have the higher resistance. So 6.4 is the start winding, so this one's the start. And this one is the run. And that's how you figure that out. So we know that there's no open windings in the motor. So the other test I did was to test for a short. So I tested each of these terminals one at a time to ground on the compressor. And basically you're looking for a reading of OL, which is basically no continuity whatsoever. So there's no short to ground inside the compressor. So that compressor is good. Okay, let's move on to putting this kit in. And the way these hard start kits come, they come with an end that just squeezes right down over the terminals on the compressor. So which ones go where? Okay, comes with a little drawing on it here. White goes to the start, red goes to the run, and black goes to the common, okay? So red to the run, so we've already determined that it's like that there. So the run terminal, the run terminal is the far one at the top. The start is the terminal on the, this side facing me and the common is the, the bottom one, okay? So white goes to start, red to run, and black to the common. Okay, so the terminal that feeds the start relay and capacitor, the factory one, is like this, okay? And so what I did was I cut that off. There was two whites into one side, into one terminal, and a blue one into the other side, okay? So I've just split those apart Join that to one wire, join the blue to the other side. Now everything's hooked up in there. Now before I tuck all this in, I'm just gonna run it here without securing this. And you know, make sure everything's running good before I put it all away. And right away I can hear the compressor running and vibrating, I can feel it running. It wasn't doing that before.
Okay, I've got this hard start capacitor and relay. I took a zap strap and I strapped it down there. And I've routed the wires in such a way that they're not going to get caught in this little fan over here. And it's all nice and secure. My terminals are nice and tight. And those wire nuts for the power connection are out of the way and they're not going to vibrate into anything that's moving. That's pretty good. And another thing is I didn't want to put the this capacitor or the relay right up against the body of the compressor. So it's not going to pick up heat from there. And my connections are all tight. That looks good. And what I've done is I've put a link for this hard start capacitor down in the description. Okay, let's put those last few screws in there. Hear it start up. Okay. Now we've got a temperature alarm. I can already feel it blowing nice cool air in here. Wow, that's gonna be so much better than living out of a cooler. We've had stuff in a cooler there for a few days. Anyway, so if you've got a fridge and it starts to blow warm air and it's not cooling your food, don't just throw it out. Don't just call the repairman. Okay, it's a few hours later. Let's take a look and see what's happened. Okay, fridge temperature is down to 38 Fahrenheit and the freezer's down to zero, which is the initial setting. So we're gonna set it a little lower. Set the freezer to minus four. Okay, it'll do that. What I did was I put a jug of water in here a couple hours ago. And look at that, frozen solid. Wow. That calls for a victory dance. And I'll do that off camera, but we got it fixed. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.